All right. Well, President Trump has announced uh, that in the coming days, the U.S. will notify the United Nations that it intends to remove itself from the arms trade treaty. Now, on the other hand, Trump administration officials say that the president ordered them to prepare a push for a new arms control agreement with Russia and China. Michelle, Michelle Greenstein joins me with the details on both of these stories. There's here, there's there, there's one hand, there's the other. So, explain. Sure. So let's start with the arms treaty. This regulates non-nuclear weapons, and it has the explicit aim of making it harder for illegal weapons to be used by those who may violate human rights. So this is a U.N.-negotiated treaty. It was signed by the U.S. in 2013 by President Obama, but it's never been ratified by the Senate. Now, President Trump is saying that in the coming days, the U.S. will notify the U.N. that it's going to reject this treaty. He called it a threat to American freedoms, and he says we will never ratify it. Let's take a listen. We will never allow foreign bureaucrats to trample on your Second Amendment freedom. And that is why my administration will never ratify the U.N. Arms Trade Treaty. I will sign right now in front of a lot of witnesses, a lot, a lot of witnesses, a message asking the Senate to discontinue the treaty ratification process and to return the now rejected treaty right back to me in the Oval Office where I will dispose of it. So uh, President Trump is right, because a treaty, when ratified, it actually supersedes the Constitution, so there's the potential to trample right. on Second Amendment rights. But many are seeing this as more of a symbolic move, and earlier here at RT, we spoke with former Pentagon official Michael Maloof. So let's hear what he had to say about the actual effectiveness of this treaty. Illegal arms go on all the time. Right. I mean, we, we, we see it all the time. And, and how do a lot of these countries get, get their arms to, to foment revolutions here and there? I mean, there's no accountability. There's no, I have never seen a report that says that this treaty has been effective in any way, shape, or form. So I think it's a solid point. The U.S., you know, is the biggest arms exporter. This treaty, you know, whether or not it was ratified, didn't do anything about right. that. And it's just another treaty in a long line of treaties that the president has withdrawn from uh, the Paris Climate True. Accords and the Iran Treaty. And exactly. here's another one. So, But it also seems as though the outrage that's coming from his withdrawal is a little bit overhyped. Right. Uh, what, what's over really happening is he's just pandering to the corporate gun lobby. And actually, an NRA spokesperson today said that, quote, this move gave NRA members one more reason to enthusiastically support his is President Trump's pr presidency. So now, he's getting what he wants. We have the other story where yes. the president is asking his people to put together some kind of proposals possibly for China and, excuse me, and Russia for denuclearization. Right. The Trump administration officials are saying that the president ordered them to prepare a new arms treaty with Russia and China. Uh, these administration officials say that, among other things, it will bring Russian nuclear weapons under new limits. They're also still figuring out how to implement this order from President Trump. And it's also possible that it may not even happen, because, um, especially because of the administration's longstanding kind of going back and forth and being at odds with both Moscow and Beijing. Um, we also have the news from yesterday. Uh, where, you know, there was a summit between Russia and North Korea. Right. And after this summit, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that um, both Washington and Moscow want North Korea to give up its nukes. And he actually said that Kim Jong-un is ready to give up his nuclear weapons, but only if he gets these ironclad security guarantees. Now, this is pretty much a continuation of North Korea's longstanding position. They've said before that they would put their nukes on the table so long as the U.S. ends its hostile posture. What I find very interesting, and this might be a little off the beaten path here, is, sure. uh, you know, Vladimir Putin who has expressed in the past that, you know, the world wants to see uh, North Korea denuclearize, but that he would put, you know, Washington and, and Moscow in the same boat. And right, we want to see, after we want to see, you know, years. we want to see a deal made here. Right. And uh, so any anything that could help it along is fine with me. Yeah, I think um, both countries are definitely saying outwardly that they have an interest in negotiation. Of course, um, inwardly or even sometimes outwardly, the U.S. really doesn't want to recognize North Korea as a nuclear power. And I think sometimes we have the tendency to neglect the fact that North North Korea has legitimate security interests. Whether or not you like the North Korean government, right, this is a country that definitely has a history of being under attack by the U.S., so they have uh, legitimate concerns. And, of course, the, with the past few countries that uh, yeah. the U.S. has, you know, been aggressive towards Afghanistan, Libya, Iraq, all these countries didn't have nuclear weapons. So many say that the reason North Korea right. has developed these weapons is kind of, yeah. you know, to protect and, themselves. And, and Kim might be, is uh, probably a little interested in, in remaining uh, powerful if he, if he 
joins the rest of the world. He has to open up society to his people, which is something he hasn't done. But a great, interesting conversation. Great report. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. I'm Rick Sanchez. You found us on YouTube, and that's awesome. But you know what? I'm also live every night at 7 and 8 p.m. Eastern on DirecTV and DISH and cable and satellite, the RT app, oh, and Pluto TV. I'll see you there.